Okay, and I'm back. So look at this story now. The first, I'm just going to put a disclaimer that <laughs> vigilante killings are not okay, not encouraging it. It's just, we see this type of story a lot, and we always see women put behind bars, or men, but mostly women in these situations put behind bars for life. So this one's got a little bit of a twist, right? So here they say, judge orders Iowa teen trafficking victim to pay $150,000 in restitution to the family of a SAS that she killed. Now, her story is very sad, especially why, you know, she even ended up in the situation. But man, an Iowa teenage ST victim who stabbed her SAist, I'm so sorry for all these code words, I have to do it, it's YouTube, otherwise they just make sure that no one sees this ever, so... Bear with me. It's not like I want to talk like that. Who's, who stabbed her, SAS, to death, was sentenced by a judge on Tuesday to five years of closely supervised probation and must pay $150,000 restitution to her abuser's family. Piper Lewis, 17, stabbed her abuser, 37-year-old Zachary Brooks, more than 30 times in June 2020. She was initially charged with first-degree murder. So we normally see that, right? Last year, Lewis pleaded to involuntary manslaughter and willful injury, both of which were punishable by up to 10 years in prison. However, Polk County District Judge David Porter deferred those prison sentences on Tuesday, meaning Lewis could serve 20 years if she violates her probation. Porter said he ordered Lewis to pay restitution to Brooks' family because the court was presented with no other option. He explained that the restitution is mandatory under Iowa law. Lewis, so here she is, and we're going to look at a clip of her statement in court. Okay. Okay. So, Lewis, who was 15 when she stabbed Brooks in a... Man, I still wanted to see exactly how to say this. Is it Demont? 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 Mr. Grizzly, he grew up French, so he'll be like, oh, my word. I just wanted to know how you guys said, but okay, had run away from home to escape her abusive adoptive mother. She was sleeping in the halls of an apartment building when Christopher Brown, 28, took her in and began trafficking her to other men for sex, according to officials. That is just so sad. Right? It's, man, okay. So they say among those men was Brooks, who Lewis said essayed her multiple times before she killed him. She recalled being forced at knife point to go to his apartment for sex. After Brooks essayed her for what, could, what would end up being the last time, Lewis grabbed a knife off a bedside table and stabbed him. Neither police nor prosecutors dispute whether Lewis was trafficked and assaulted, but prosecutors allege that Brooks was not an immediate threat because he was asleep when he was stabbed. Iowa is not among the dozens of states with a safe harbor law that gives trafficking victims some level of criminal immunity. Lewis will be transported to a halfway house in Des Moines. I don't know. I'm so sorry. Des Moines? Is that what you guys said? Des Moines. Okay. In Des Moines. And will wear a GPS tracking device to ensure she does not fall back into the lifestyle that you thus far left, Porter said. She'll also have to complete 200 hours of community service. Oh, my word. So she has to pay $150,000, complete 200 hours of community service. <laughs> I don't know, man. Let me know what you think about it. Duh. Moin. D. Moins. <laughs> you guys. D. Moin. So Ink says, I'm sorry, she was 15. Him asleep might have been the only time she could find the courage. Exactly. Right? She said, my spirit has been burned, but still glows through the flames. That is amazing that she said that she read from a prepared statement prior to her sentencing. Hear me roar, see me glow, and watch me grow. Wow. I'm a survivor, she continued, and we're going to watch her statement. Prosecutors took issue with Lewis labeling herself as a survivor claiming she failed to take responsibility for Brooks's death and left his children without a father. <laughs> what? How dare you call yourself a survivor of a sex trafficker who freaking essayed you all day long? I mean, like, hello, she is a survivor. What? 
The judge pressed Lewis to explain the poor choices she made that led to the stabbing and noted his concerns that she sometimes did not wish to follow rules in juvenile detention. The next five years of your life will be full of rules you disagree with, I'm sure of it, Porter said, later adding, this is the second chance that you've asked for, you don't get a third. Lewis said, I took a person's life. My intentions that day were not just to go out and take somebody's life. In my mind, I felt that I wasn't safe and I felt that I was in danger, which resulted in the acts. But it doesn't take away from the fact that a crime was committed. She said she regretted the stabbing, but to say there's one victim is absurd. Iowa does have an affirmative defense law that offers some leeway to victims of crime if the victim committed the violation under compulsion by another's threat of serious injury, provided that the defendant reasonably believed that such injury was imminent. However, prosecutors argued that Lewis waived that affirmative defense when she pleaded guilty to manslaughter and willful injury. Lewis earned her GED while in juvenile lockup and was unable to communicate with friends and family. Whoa. Let's see what you guys say, and then we'll watch her statement. I know, right? I'm surprised the judge didn't tell her she asked for it. So, <laughs> they're better off without him. Whew. So, I'm not, like, encouraging murder. I just understand. She was like, put yourself in her shoes. Like, whoa. To me, it's total self-defense, you know? What, what must she do? A teenager running away from an abusive home. Now she's on the streets and now here come all these predators. I mean, it's it's really bad. Yeah, she's just being re-victimized. Yeah, F yeah, lady, roar. <laughs> Thank you, Rando from Iowa. Duh, moin. Okay, so I'm going to play her statement for you. I hope you can hear it nicely. In fact, what I'm going to do is um, just boost the sound a little bit. Okay. Today, my voice will be heard. The story of Piper Lewis holds power. The trauma of Piper Lewis carries a ruptured be beginning tormented past and a delayed future. With perseverance, we have the ability to change the direction of our delayed and unknown futures. Living with the knowledge of this has been a challenge. It can conquer thoughts, feelings, and spiritual practices. With the power of patience and forgiveness provided to me by others as well as myself, I prevailed. I am resilient. My story can change things. My story has changed me. The events that took place on that horrific day cannot be changed as much as I wish they could. That day, a combination of complicated actions took place, resulting in the death of a person as well as stolen innocence of a child. Remorse forms itself in front of me As I grow and evolve as a young woman, I feel for the victim's family. I wish what happened never did, and I truly feel that way. The healing process is inevitable. I repeat, I wish the events that took place on June 1st, 2020 never occurred, but to say there's only one victim to this story is absurd. My future is unknown. The mental game of tug of war I compete with daily is painful. So today, September 1st, I have written this with, a, with an extreme wave of relief. 27 months of the waiting game will be over. My anxiety, as well as poor decision-making, played a role into me wanting to self-sabotage just a few weeks ago and make negative and impulsive decisions. Making, feeling my world on my shoulders, just wanting one answer, needing to hear it so I can continue to progress and evolve as a person. 
I felt stuck. I feel I have taken advantage of all things a child aged 15 through 17 can within the walls of Polk County Juvenile Detention Center. I battled challenges with the strength of my own resilience. I wasn't alone no matter how many times I felt lost, detached, and isolated. I had an amazing therapist, Megan, to help guide me in finding my voice. She heard me. Walk I'm just gonna pause it for a second. Please share the hashtag Piper Lewis, spelt this way, all over social media. Let's show a tremendous love. I don't know if she's on social media or not, but Piper, if you're watching this, you are welcome here anytime. The whole Grizzly community, we love Piper, right? Man, this is hard. This is so sad. <laughs> and I really hope, you know, I don't even know what to hope. I hope she gets justice. I hope she's okay. I hope she never harms herself. I hope she knows that she is seen, heard, and loved. Walking through the fire, a phoenix like me carries on its back as it rises from the ashes. This means I face rape, abuse, hatred, betrayal, manipulation, abandonment, loss of a parent, loneliness, and self-revelation. The list goes on and on. I wonder what else I will carry in that sack of beautiful pain. I often ask myself why I hurt. The answer is clear. Hurt people hurt people, whether it's intentional or not. My, my actions cause pain and hurt upon others. Others' actions cause pain and hurt upon me. Shame. <laughs> she's been through so much trauma and abuse. Oh no, like she's like, my actions cause, I understand why she's saying it, but man, she needs so much love. Um, there is a GoFundMe for Piper Lewis, and it ex GoFundMe for Piper Lewis exceeds $150,000 she must pay. That's so nice. There is a GoFundMe that's being created, and it's raised more than $200,000. I will share it with you guys after this clip. I am very now. I am very young now that I realize it. I feel that I need to prove myself. I need to act grown. I need to be perfect with a mindset of consistent persistence. I know that I am being watched by a million eyes. Reality is I will make mistakes, even with the court's pressure and the thought of one mistake I will make determine my entire future. I refuse to fail. I refuse to let the system fail me. Some days I feel like giving up, but yet again, I am the light at the end of the tunnel. I flicker brighter than the simple thought of my own future. I must prevail. I own the power to take accountability. The ones that hold me accountable deserve a reason, an explanation, not excuses which are often confused. In these steps to reasonable ownership, I felt I have taken the proper accountability. The, own, the unknown. I carry myself through the wind with sand and dust particles in my eyes. Why? Because of what I carry. I am not a stranger to the dark because I am the light. So why question my mind, the way I think, process, and react? If you were me, how perfect would you be in the sea of the unknown? I do not fear the thought of further incarceration. I fear not being able to accomplish some of my goals. I have gra graduated high school at age 17, a year ahead of my class. I'm going to be a fashion and graphic designer, open up my business titled Pi, create a place of comfort and acceptance for girls like me, become a juvenile justice advocate for youth in Iowa, be a counselor, start a family and tell my story. No matter what the next chapter is, I will still rise. No matter what the judge's decision is today, I will still prevail. Nothing can stop a positive path of progress but negativity and doubt. During my journey, I have found part of the spiritual world and its beauty. I have progressed with the ability to lead with the power of many while maintaining self-worth. It has been difficult for me to communicate reasons why and how I have changed 
in other words, been rehabilitated, which is a result of my actions growing up in detention. I have made decisions strictly for my own growth. I have made mistakes simply because of my own cognitive development. I'm aware of what's right and wrong, but the constant fight of wanting to live in a life of a normal teenager inside of a detention center has been difficult. My legal team has walked with me with outstretched arms full of love and integrity, but the battle of opening up to all of my team has been a journey for a person to be honest and open. You must have trust built within the foundations of a healthy relationship. Once trust is scarce, opening up is more difficult to tell my story and then go back to detention life. That has been a struggle. Once you leave the visiting room, you leave with a part of me. I had no other choice but to find people to connect with in detention. Once I was released, I was conflicted with why I was treated like fragile glass or why I couldn't have friends. I was tempted to return to comfort. My life before called to me I just wanted to be a normal teenager. I felt once again isolated and abandoned. It triggered my fight or flight along with seeing my trafficker again. What people fail to realize is that I never got out of the life. I was taken out by my circumstances. Being placed in the same environment as I was as a victim of human trafficking triggered me. I couldn't even be around smoke without having flashbacks. I always question why I have such an articulate way of thinking or why I feel so disconnected. I can't really answer why. Losing my father taught me something. To stay connected to the ones you love, you must first stay connected within the soul. My spirit has been burned, but still glows through the flames. My mind has been poked and degraded, but I still radiate intelligent, positive thinking. To question my worth, no matter what my next journey is, isn't an option. I am resilient. The apple falls far from the tree of its choosing. Other youth have told me I am different. I glow when I speak words of upliftment. upliftment. That's my purpose, to lead with the power of many. Hear me war, see me glow, and watch me grow. Like a flower, a rose petal in the wind, I fly away. I let go of my past and drift beautifully into the future. I am a survivor. Oh boy, <laughs> that was tough, huh? So for those of you who asked to show the bunny when I finished it, showing the bunny. This is a trigger bunny. If you didn't know, if you're brand new to the channel, I didn't know that that would be very triggering, but I suppose it's very sad. Um, okay, so. What I'm going to do now is let's just find her uh, Piper Lewis GoFundMe. Here they say, GoFundMe for Piper Lewis exceeds $150,000. She must pay a state of the alleged essayist that she killed. A GoFundMe. Fundraiser is created to support Piper Lewis has raised more than $200,000 from 5,000 donations as of noon Wednesday. Lewis, 17, pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter and willful injury for stabbing to death Zachary Brooks, 37, who she says essayed her multiple times in 2020 when she was 15. During a sentencing hearing Tuesday, she received five years of probation and a deferred judgment, meaning her record could be expunged before completion of the sentence if she meets the conditions of her sentence. Leland Skipper, who taught freshman math to Lewis at Des Moines Lincoln High School, organized the fundraiser in part to help cover money she legally owes Brooks' estate. So to Leland uh, Schipper, Skipper, however you say it, wherever you're from, of course, in the Netherlands, we'd say Schipper. Wow, thank you for doing that. Why Iowa law requires Piper Lewis to pay $150,000? An Iowa law enacted in 1997 requires people convicted of homicides to pay $150,000 in compensation. By mid-morning Wednesday, the fundraiser already had surpassed that amount. Wow. A homeless Des Moines teen who killed her alleged SAist faces 20 years in prison. She's a victim to her, attorney says. As recently as last week, it had only about $4,000 in donations. After Porter ruled Lewis had to pay restitution, 
Skipper reworked and republicized the GoFundMe site to capitalize on national media attention on the case. As I watched some of the people coming in from outside of our state, I think that people are in shock that Iowa has this law the way we do regarding the $150,000, Skipper said. This is a clear example of where it's completely unjust. On Wednesday morning, the fundraiser was raising so much money that Skipper increased his goal to $200,000. As the fundraiser passed the $130,000 mark, Skipper felt overwhelmed by the support for Lewis. Piper's case is so obvious to people why this law is flawed, but she's not unique in this law being problematically applied. It's beautiful and it's amazing. Will Piper Lewis have to pay the money? Lewis's attorneys will discuss with her if they will appeal the order to pay the $150,000. Matthew Sheely argued to Porter that Brooks was more than 51% responsible for his own death and therefore Lewis should not have to pay his estate. Oh, to pay his estate anything. I know that is going to outrage a number of people. Sheely said of the decision, there are options, legal avenues that might be available to Piper, which will be explored. Porter based his decision on a 2017 Iowa Supreme Court case that found 15 year old, a 15-year-old who pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and had to pay the $150,000 required by Iowa law, and that it is not unconstitutional when applied to juvenile homicide offenders. The court is cognizant that you and your supporters will be frustrated with the imposition of the $150,000 in restitution to Mr. Brooks's estate, Porter uh, told Lewis Tuesday. This court is presented with no other option other than which is dictated by the law of the state. <sighs> wow. I'm just like, oh my gosh, the story. It's quite something, huh? Fundraising is an option being considered to help Lewis pay the sum, Sheely said, but her lawyers want to make sure that any funds she may take to pay Brooks's estate will not violate the law. I think the restitution obligation that she has to deal, that she now, what, hold on, sorry, <clears throat> that she has to now deal with is probably the least of her concerns, Sheely after Lewis was sentenced. I'm pretty sure she's going to be focused on doing what she needs to do to take care of herself. Skipper had contacted with uh, had contact with Lewis and her legal team late last year. Over the past two days, he has been in contact with her lawyers regarding the fundraiser. If Lewis cannot use the money to pay off her restitution, she may be able to use it to pay for college or other expenses, Skipper said. They are excited about this as a path for Piper to not have this debt, Skipper said. For now, the best way for people to help Lewis, if they do not already know her maybe to give her space but what to give her space but support sex trafficking victims like her according to her attorneys help piper and girls like her by saying we're not accepting trafficking her attorney paul white said after lewis was sentenced that's how we help piper don't let her story be forgotten skipper plans to meet with lewis once she's placed at the fresh start women's center one way or another, he thinks Lewis will put the money to good use by paying back the Brooks family, paying for her education, or donating it to a cause that can help young women like her. If for some reason this money can't go to a restitution, there will always be ways that it can be used to help sex trafficking victims, Skipper said. Oh, my word. Wow, this is just... Let's click on this one and have a look. Okay, so I'm going to make sure... Let's click share... Copy the link. I'm going to put this in the chat and I'll make sure to pin it in the comments as well. Help Piper Lewis, survivor of trafficking. Wow. Hmm. $235,000 has been raised. So it's still going up as well. Hmm. Thank you, Doodlebug. Lori, thanks, G, for bringing us this info. It's very upsetting, and I'm sorry if it triggered anyone, or if you, I hope you're okay. What an impressive statement. I agree. Uh, undead, I agree with you. The GoFundMe donations demonstrate support of Piper, the victim. So positive. Yes. She probably gets no rights to her story either. That's horrible. Ooh, that was just... So I'll, I'll make sure that um, the Wagner summary and this gofundme as well is uh pinned in the comments right after this live stream i'll do it so if you see the live stream in and you go to the comment section i'm going to be there too putting this in there for you in case you do want to donate or anything if you guys i don't know find a way to reach piper i'll be looking as well i would love to just show her that the community 
you know, this community, Grizzly community cares about her so much. Even if she's watching this, just know, man, we've got your back. What she's been through is absolutely horrendous. I mean, I just don't know what they expect someone in this situation to do. I'm not saying murder. I'm saying in the whole situation, the whole snowball effect, like there's so many steps where someone could have really used a lot of help and love and care, a teenager, you know. Thank you so much, Sue. Sue says, amazing reporting today, Gizla. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you all. Uh, thank you for being here. Hope you enjoyed today's Case Club episode. Um, and go check out the Pike County Massacre episode that I did so in case you just missed some of that or need an, a good overview. Well, I hope it was good. I did my best with the overview. But if you need an overview of it, I'll be monitoring the trial, as I say, and I'll be back soon with any other news. Um, as you can see, like the Jill Sidebotham cases, all these cases we've covered, uh, I do monitor them and I look out for updates. So also thank you to the Grizzlies who send me emails with updates and things like that. All right. Thank you. Rochelle Pranzo says, so much covered here today. Fabulous, Gizla. Remember, guys, hit the thumbs up if you like the way I cover true crime. I know it feels weird sometimes to like a case. It's not you going like, yeah, I really like this. It's you like the way I cover true crime. Thank you for subscribing. Hit the share button. I'll see you guys. If you ever wonder where I'm at, because some people have emailed me like, oh, my word, where are you? <laughs> like, I'm literally on Patreon or YouTube membership or on social media. You'll see me active somewhere every single day. Okay, I've got Twitter, Instagram, two TikTok accounts, two YouTube channels, um, Patreon. You'll find me somewhere. <laughs> that, <laughs> mods, you know, huh? You'll find me somewhere. <laughs> Thank you so much, mods, for being here. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. And I will see you again soon. All right, stay safe and snarky and be mindful of those red flags. <laughs>